Zoo P is Ko Zoo P. <laughs> I like that. Look at that. She's got a little tsundere face. I guess I just can't help but talk too much. Because I think too much. Relatable. <laughs> what Kozupi wished for was... Kozupi wants to kill. <laughs> what? What the frick? How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time... Oh my goodness, Don't I'm not even going to try to encapsulate everything that happened last time. You want to know what happened last time? Go watch the 12 hour video. <laughs> That's where I'm at at this point. But what I will say, one of the very last things that happened was uh, we got beat up by a bunch of hooligans. And then those hooligans got beat up themselves by something. We don't know what it is yet. Uh, but we do know that Takami was saying, I want to kill them. And then they got beat up. So, I'm wondering if, like, he brought a delusion to life, and it beat them up, or if it was one of the girls, I I have no idea. But, uh, this is where we're at. We woke up, we're in this hospital room-esque place, question mark, and Shogun's in the corner, so... Uh, yeah, we're kind of in the hot seat right at the beginning of this episode, so I guess, without any further ado... Let's just get back into this, shall we? The pale evening sun shone through the window of a hospital room. The light, singed red by the twilight, divided the room into two distinct parts, one captivated by light and one dominated by darkness. Okay. And what was illuminated by that light? was a bed adorned with pure white sheets. On the bedside table sat a handheld video game console. A number of academic books lined a nearby shelf, neighbored by the muted pink petals of an arrangement of Cosmos flowers resting in a vase. The room was neat and tidy. Nothing moved. Nothing stirred. It was a space where time seemed to have come to a stop. The window cut into the evening sky, and by that window was a small figure sitting in a wheelchair. Oh boy. The figure's back to the window. He remained still and motionless. His breathing was so light, and the intervals between each breath were so long one might think he was already dead. His skin was covered with wrinkles. His cheeks were hollow. His eye sockets were sunken in. His scalp was barren. With these features, it was often questioned whether he should be referred to as a young boy or an old man. His shadow, which he had dubbed Shogun, extended all the way to the door of the room. Wait, his shadow is dubbed Shogun? Huh? The world then moved for the first time. The door slowly opened, and a figure emerged from the darkened corridor, stepping foot into the room steeped in evening glow. Uh, 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 huh? No freaking way. Bro, am I about to be right? Saki Haradimi did not fully enter the hospital room, instead choosing to remain at the entrance. Her expression, illuminated by the setting sun, detailed how the girl had been deep in thought. Can we... stop now? I'm sorry to say this, but that boy, Nishijo Takami, should just be erased. Yo, what? Matrix talk? What is happening? Wait, wait, I can't tell quite if that's, if that's Demi or not though yet. 
Oh man, what the heck? Oh no! Shogun remained motionless in response to her words. Okay, so it was her that said that. What the frick? I knew she was like an agent, dude. Is she a delusion though? Am I right on that? I knew she was an agent. I, I said it was for Nozomi, but, but she's still an agent. It was for Shogun. But is Shogun working for Nozomi or is, or is he working for himself? That's what we don't know. Because I still think Shogun's something inside of our head. Or he's like a part of us. He's something to do with us, you know? Dang. Why do you think so? He's dangerous. Dimi's voice was laden with grief and sorrow. Her eyes appeared slightly moist. Can I... erase him? No, you can't. Dimi was unable to confirm whether or not he was actually moving his mouth to speak. What do you mean erase him? What kind of power do you have? Do you mean like... Do you have power over delusions to where you can erase people? What the frick? What is this, Twee Wee? Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, what happened? I, I don't know what's going on. There is something he must do for me. <laughs> Dimi hung her head, then gently ran her fingers through her hair that draped down before her. Can you... remember your dreams? Yes. Oh. I forget them soon after I wake up. Some people can remember them, and some people can't. People who can must be real romantics. I often have very, very long dreams. They can feel like several years have passed by as I dream them. I used to have ones like that, too. Or, at least, I feel like I did. But, that's just an illusion. In reality, dreams only take up two or three seconds of your time as you're sleeping. They're like bubbles, floating to the surface of your mind. And that's why you need to hurry and wake up. If you don't, then someday Nishijo Takumi is going to kill you. Even if that were to happen, I would be at peace with it. This is a dream from which I cannot awaken. I must see it through. <laughs> After the dream is complete, will there be anything left? What the frick, man? What was that? So we know Demi's working with Shogun, but what the frick does that mean? I, I still think Shogun is a part of, of, of Nishijo's mind, because she said that Nishijo, I think it was her speaking, saying that, 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 that we were going to kill Shogun, right? And does kill mean, like, like, erase from our mind? Or kill as in, like, like, what does it mean exactly? I don't know what that... But, oh, man, dude. Does that mean Dini's not actually bad? Because I don't think Shogun's bad. So if Shogun's not bad and, and she's working for him, then then their cause is probably okay. Because I still, I still don't think Shogun's out for our worst interest. I think he's trying to help us somehow, you know? But, so then the fact that Dini's questioning him, like, shouldn't I erase him? He's like, no. Not yet, don't worry about it, right? It's like he's got something else that he's trying to get from us, which means to me that he's probably wanting to help us. That's just what it feels like to me. Gosh, what the frick? 
I don't know. Okay, all right. My shoulder was shaken softly. It was extremely gentle, and after just one shake, it stopped. It felt like someone was peering at my face. My consciousness was slowly returning to me. As it did, the pain in my body returned along with it. The smell in my nose. It was a smell so strong it made me want to vomit. The smell of blood. I felt a tingling around my upper lip. The taste of iron spread through my mouth. Slowly, I opened my eyes. Oh my gosh! It was Orihara! Okay! I wondered if it was one of the girls, but dang, I thought for sure it'd be like Senna. Okay, yeah. I guess I guess in terms of subversion of expectation, it makes the most sense that it'd be Orihara, right? Because she's the last one I would probably think. Well, technically Ayase, because she's in the hospital, but... Alright. Interesting. I was in the same back alley as before. I was lying face down on the asphalt. And right in front of me was a small, reddish-brown puddle of liquid. Likely seeping out from one of the dumpsters. Grimacing at the smell invading my nostrils, I sat up. My whole body ached. My face in particular hurt like heck. It was hot and tingly. Like someone had taken a lighter and gasoline to it. Uh. Right beside me, a girl I recognized was kneeling down and looking at me. She looked like she was about to cry. It was the transfer student. The girl who'd transferred into my class. Um, what was her name again? Oh, oh, Ohara? Oh, Oshihara? Why was the transfer student here, I wondered. <laughs> and then, the transfer student held out something to me. It was my wallet. Why'd she have it? My head still foggy, I looked around. <laughs> the three DQNs that had attacked me earlier were now lying in a pool of blood. W what the heck? It, it was like they'd all been one-shot by some OP mob. The faces of all three were barely still intact. W were they dead? None of them moved a single muscle. No. Was this the seventh new gen case? Who the heck would do something like this? Had... Had I... <laughs> the transfer student then stood up and beckoned to me. I was completely pale. She alternated between looking at me, who was still very confused, and the three collapsed people. Tears welled up in the corner of her eyes. Dude, she freaking, she freaking destroyed those guys. He said his, their faces were barely intact. I translate that to like unrecognizable probably, right? So like, what the frick? Dude, I still think like whatever her delusion is, like whatever her particular ability is, I wonder if she's got like a stand or something. You know what I mean? Like like a like a JoJo stand or like a freaking uh uh uh, uh like uh what is that character's name? Cora, I think, or or uh Cro Crona 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 from uh from from uh, uh Soul Eater with the freaking uh, uh, shadow guy on his back or whatever. That freaking that's what it reminds me of. I wonder if she's like haunted by something that bullies her. And pushes her downstairs and stuff like that. But then in these moments, we'll freaking decimate people, dude. That's going to be freaking creepy if that's the case. Because because her tears are welling up in her eyes, right? So it makes you think that she's probably not happy that that happened. 
I don't know. Suddenly, she grabbed my hand and took off running with me in tow, staggering every once in a while. Okay. As soon as we reached the main street, the transfer student let go of my hand. We hadn't run very far, but she was already out of breath. Um... (laughs) We both fell silent. Maybe the transfer student was just as bad at talking as I was. No, that, that didn't matter right now. What I needed to do first was figure out what the heck had happened. I'd been being harassed by those DQNs, and then they'd picked a fight with me. Then I must have passed out. But how long had I been unconscious? Okay. Oh, what? Choice time? Um... Well, definitely not green, obviously. So... I can't imagine red is bad. I... Unless she's, like, deceptive, right? Maybe she's just... She looks like an innocent girl, but really isn't. That's a possibility. I'm gonna stay neutral. It just not neither of those options seem good, so about five mini minutes. What the, there it was again. I'd heard it again. I thought someone I knew was nearby and was trying to talk to me. But I couldn't see anyone that fit that description. Darn it! Where were all of these auditory illusions coming from? And why were they all happening today? Well, we know because of the patent thing that that's probably something to do with it, right? We're, we're having auditory attacks, right? Aural attacks, I believe they called it. Dude. Or is that her mind? Is it? Is she speaking? Ah, I think it is. It is Orihara. What the frick? She's the one that's been talking to us, but she's like freaking... Wait. So if she's the one that's been talking to us... Has she been watching us and then putting that in our head? Is she the one that's been saying Kazupi? Or whatever? So, wait, but then she was super deranged. Does she have, like, a split person? <gasps> she might have DID! Because the crying person is different probably than the killer inside of her, right? Maybe? So she's someone who has DID like Yuo was saying? Oh, frick, I don't know. Crap, but I think she's the one talking to us in our in, in, in our mind. It's not an illusion at all. Maybe I've gotten so overwhelmed lately. I had to create a new personality inside my head just so I could cope with everything. Or is you a right? And I really do have multiple personalities. Kozupi is her own Kozupi. She's a different person than Nishijokun. You got it? I've heard that people with multiple personalities can't have conversations between personalities, but maybe this is an exception. Like Kozupi said, Kozupi's a different person. I was getting really fed up with this voice. I wonder how I'm going to be able to stand just this annoying Kozupi personality let alone all the other ones. Besides, how many personalities do I have inside me in the first place? I read in some book somewhere that there are patients in the U.S. with as many as 24 personalities. If it's the one I'm thinking of, that was a hoax. The very first one that ever came out with DID was apparently a total hoax. Some, I forget what the woman's name was, but it was a woman. And I think she, maybe she only had two. Maybe she only had herself and then there was another one inside of her. I can't remember. But I I remember the very first case that was ever, like, written down or whatever to be studied ended up being a hoax. So that's all I know as far as that goes. And on top of that, I'm not even sure if the personality I know as me is the main one. Yeah, that'd be kind of a scary thing, wouldn't it? (laughs) 
Maybe the original personality that owns Nishijo Takami's body isn't actually me. As I stood there, frozen and dumbfounded, the transfer student poked my shoulder with her finger. <laughs> when she'd poked me, she'd tried to mumble something, but hadn't ended up saying anything. So, instead of speaking, she decided to timidly raise her hand. Kozupi is Kozupi. Uh huh? Kozupi is Kozupi. <laughs> I like that. Look at that. She's got a little tsundere face. Yo. But she was like, but she's like a killer, dude. Wait, so the, I'm trying to remember because because when all the students were making fun of her and we were like, I wish they would all die. She's like, I think they would be better if they were dead. And, and then freaking and then and then whatever happened, I forget we left, right? So is she a psycho or is she just like a bullied kid that also feels like we do or something? Yo, I kind of like her now, though. She's, she's got a little bit of spunk. She was so reserved, but in, in her little mind thing she's doing, she's like, she's a little cindere, <laughs> kind of. And Kozapi is not transfer student neither Z's. Her name's is Orihara Kozue. <laughs> Orihara Kozue? I, I very faintly remembered hearing that name from Miss Mikun a long time ago. Kozue. Kozue. Kozupi. No. Does this mean that this voice I'm hearing is one that you're sending to my head? The transfer student nodded her head empathetically. <gasps> Ooh, dude! Alright, alright, alright. Okay, cool. So, this is the first bit of, like, sort of concrete evidence that we've had. Sort of. I say concrete with a... You have to say... You have to take that with a grain of salt, okay? Because nothing feels concrete. But also... Everything else has been like, is that just a delusion or is that in my head? I can't tell. But now we know that this voice is coming from Kozupi and we know that they're freaking reading our minds, dude. They're freaking, they're freaking hearing what we're thinking. This time we know because we know he's not talking out loud. Oh, frick. Okay. T -t Telepathy? Kozupi doesn't really know how any of it works. But yes. Kozupi can telepathy. That's ridiculous. This voice... is her? Nishijo-kun, are you okay, Zs? The transfer student, her head still hanging downward, glanced up at me and pointed at my face. Her fingertip was trembling. Your nose is going dribble-dribble. I touched my hand to my face. The bottom of my nose was slimy. My nose was bleeding. The transfer student offered me a tissue. Is that from getting beat up or is this like an Eleven thing from freaking Stranger Things where it's like we're using our brain power and our nose is freaking bleeding because our brains are freaking oozing out of our nose? <laughs> I took it from her and wiped away the blood. But I was still feeling very uneasy. The transfer student is... Kozupi, righty? Kozupi isn't moving her mouth. She isn't talking. So why can I hear her voice? It's the voice of Kozupi's heart. Enough with that obnoxious speaking style. I can't stand it when people do that IRL. Well, sorry <laughs> Wait, you can hear my inner voice too? Well, yeah, duh, you've just been hearing that, like, freaking she's talking and responding to you. This voice inside your head. Hello? That's what telepathy is, so you can talk back and forth. Well, I guess there's some telepathy where you can, like, send a message to someone's brain, but they can't send it back, you know? Or whatever. Yep, Kozapi can hear it. Wh why don't you just t talk to me normally? Because it's embarrassing. <laughs> oh. 
I know how you feel. I'm like that too. When I said that, she scurried around me like a chipmunk, glanced at me, then started walking toward the station by herself. Kozapi thinks that Kozapi and Nishijokun should go now. Why? Confused, I followed her. Dude, I like her. I like her. She's she's kind of wholesome. I mean, not really. She wants to kill. I, she's cute. Let's put it that way. I like her personality. She's got this like very kind of bubbly personality. Yo, what the heck? As I walked, I noticed something. There was a stabbing pain in my side. The pain throbbed with every step I took. So I was forced to stop. I gripped my side and took a breath. There were people everywhere. I hated Shibuya with a burning passion. It felt like everyone I passed by was laughing at me. It felt like everyone was watching me. It felt like everyone knew my face. Don't look at me. Don't laugh at me. I want to find somewhere I can get away from it all. I need a place to rest. Okay, Zs. There's a really nice place around here. Just follow Kozupi. The energy in Kozupi's voice now is a stark contrast to the few times we saw each other at school before. And even though she doesn't talk IRL, her inner voice has... Uh... Energy to spare, to say the least. <laughs> hey! Okay, right now, Kozapi's gonna think like a girl who's annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to talk to her in my head is convenient, but at the same time, it's kind of annoying. Come to think of it, I'm accepting this stuff pretty easily, despite the fact that I'm not sure how the heck it actually works. That's what I was thinking. Like, you're just kind of like, it's the same thing like with Ayase. It's like, oh, there's just two Ayase. Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, you know, he just kind of like accepted that really quick instead of freaking out and screaming and running away. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is this really a genuine, real life psychic power? It's just like Kozapi thought. Kozapi really is creepy. Isn't she? Stuff like this, it's not normal. I'm not bothered by the fact that you're not normal. It's just that I've met all kinds of weirdos recently. But you, Kozapi, <laughs> you talk kind of funny, sure, but you're not scary. And you're not Dempatir. If anything, I prefer this. Oh, wowsies. Kozapi's feeling really, really happy now. As we walked, Kozapi suddenly burst into tears. Startled, I hurriedly gave her back the tissue. So is, is this like, is this Kozapi thing the same thing as like Mayeri calling herself Mayushi? Is it just a nickname she gave herself, but like without a star at the end? <laughs> like, that's the way that I'm processing it, I guess? Okay. After bowing to me way more times than she needed to, she took the tissue and wiped the tears from her eyes. Back to what I was saying earlier. It feels really weird, and also makes me feel pretty uncomfortable when people can hear everything I'm thinking. That's my honest opinion about it. But it's kind of good this way though, right? Because He's so able to talk inside of his head freely, right? And he just says the most heinous garbage. Maybe she'll be able to, like, help him process his, like, thoughts and all this different stuff. All of the stuff he doesn't like. Either that or she'll make it worse. I'm not sure. But, you know, now that he can actually feel like he can be himself by speaking within his head rather than out loud, that might help him grow. You know what I mean? Although Dimi could do it, but obviously Dimi's not at least as it seems currently out for his best interest. So, I don't know, man. This is freaking, I'm just, I'm along for the ride right now, man. But I really like her. I like Orihara right now. She's cute. <laughs> Kozapi sees. 
Kosopi is shawi. <laughs> but, but, it's not because Kosopi wants to. Kosopi can hear people even if Kosopi doesn't want to. And you. <laughs> is that so? It's so so. Well, either way, I know you don't want to be told that by an otaku freak like me. I was right. A disgusting guy like me really is worthless. That's not even one teensy bit true. <laughs> Just as I was about to revert to my depressed state, Kozapi shouted at me with her inner voice. Not allowed! You're not allowed to say something like that anymore. It's just... way too sad. <laughs> Tears started to trickle down her face once again. Why are you crying? Do you feel sorry for me? If so, there's no reason to. I mean, look at me. I'm so utterly delusional. I create personalities inside my head and treat them like they're actually real people. For example, there's Dimi. Bash, do you mean Sakihara-san? Uh, Sakihara-san? You know her? Yeah, she's Kozupi's classmate. And Nishijokun's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> L like heck she is! She's not. But Kozapi really, really thought that she really was. <laughs> Kozapi knows who Demi is. Which means... Demi is real. Wait, but... <laughs> but... What if everything we're seeing is a delusion, though? So, like, what if, what if, what if Arihara isn't real, too? That would still mean that, that Dimi might not be real as well. I still don't think Misumi-kun's real. I'm still, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that she's an actual person. I think that she's just a delusion that's been sent to us, but... But is she, is she someone that only we could see? Because if that's the case, then Orihara has to be fake too. But if she's someone who anyone with our, you know, precognitive abilities can see, then that means that she still could be a delusion that both I, or Takumi, and uh, Orihara are seeing, right? That's possible? I don't freaking know. I don't, I'm so confused. She isn't just a delusion. She isn't someone I made up in my head. Dimi really is real. I... see. I'm so happy. But... if that's really true, then why hasn't she contacted me a single time? Maybe the O-Front incident really did make her fall out of love with me. On the day after the big earthquake, Sakihara-shan left school early. She looked super de duper pale. After that, Sakihara-shan stopped coming to school at all. Maybe something sad happened to her family. Maybe. Is that so? It felt like I'd been saved. Now that I knew that Dimi hadn't abandoned me, I genuinely felt like I was about to burst into tears. If it's really true, if Dimi really isn't a delusion, then I actually have a reason to go to school. To see Dimi again. So, uh, until I see her once again, I'll try my hardest to... Be careful. Uh-huh. Nishijokun, Kozubi didn't tell you because Kozubi thought you were going out with Sakihara-shan, but... 
Nishijo-kun's gotta be careful around Sakihara-san. What do you mean? Yes, she's our little, she's been our little agent, dude. She must be able to hear her thoughts or something so she knows what's going on or something. But can, if she is still a delusion, like I'm believing that she still is, can you hear a delusion's thoughts? Is that a thing? Doesn't make sense. I, ah, okay. <laughs> Nishijo-kun doesn't really know Sakihara-shan. Uh, again, what do you mean? What do you mean I don't really know her? What? Do you mean because of the crucifixion? Or is it that, even though I'm supposed to have been classmates with her since first year, all my memories of her are missing? It's true that Dimi still is a bit of a mystery to me. But she's saved me over and over again. Whenever I'm scared, she tells me that she'll stay by my side. Dude, you're such a freaking dummy, dude. He's so freaking quick to just trust. There's no reason he should trust over that. That does not confirm a darn thing. <laughs> I trust Orihara more than I trust Dimi at the moment. Oh my gosh. She's not my enemy. Yo. For some reason, Kozapi looked a bit unstable. When you think that much stuff all at once like that... Kozapi can't keep up. <laughs> so, sorry This is just pretty new to me. Whenever I have a conversation with someone, I always end up not being able to say even 20% of what I'm thinking before it ends. But when it comes to this mental stuff, I guess I just can't help but talk too much because I think too much. Relatable. <laughs> relatable. That's the most relatable thing you've said so far. I guess that kind of applies to you too. I never would have expected you to talk so much. Inside your head, that is. It kind of only barely feels like I'm talking. Kozapi just thinks and then it all comes flowing in. Kozapi just thinks at someone like beep beep, and then the someone then goes bang boom back at me. <laughs> if you're not used to it, then your thoughts and the other person's thoughts get all fumble jumbled up, and it's like, mm, yeah? That's how Kozapi thinks about it. <laughs> she really is, she's like, this game's my itty, what the heck? Oh my gosh. It, in Japanese, please. I can kind of understand what you're going for, though. I think you're trying to say that you don't have the real subtlety or nuance of actual conversation. There's nothing like, for example, looking at the other person's expression and then deciding that you're no longer able to bring yourself to say what you wanted to say because of it. If people's thoughts just leaked out wildly, then you'd no longer be able to read the room. The transmission isn't one way, but it isn't two way either. It's like having to pick one arrow out of an avalanche of other arrows, all of which were flying in different directions, all while somehow ignoring all the other ones you didn't need. You have to tune out the excess noise. Which is why it feels so comfy, and like you're much closer to someone. But it's a lot more easier to get hurt, too. Aww. <laughs> For a moment, Kozapi's expression clouded a bit. But not long after, a tearful smile arose on her face. Brother, dude, I want to know what happened to her, man. I want to know. I want to help her. She seems so sad, but also really happy. Dude, she's like the Mayuri of this game for me. Dude, I loved Mayuri. I couldn't help it. I was just like, I gotta, we gotta protect her at all costs. She's gonna be a psycho killer though, isn't she? <laughs> she's gonna be like a Yandere. <laughs> she's gonna be like evil. Because she said that like, like, 
she 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 was saying that she thought that they should all die. Was that just something that she was saying because she was like, ah, I think they should all die, or was she like, I think they should all die? <laughs> you know, like what? Which is it? I I don't know. I I'm not sure. I don't know if she was just rooting for us or if she was actually like, I'm with you. <laughs> just say when. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is this is hard. I can't tell with her, but I, I want to believe. I want to believe. <laughs> it's Nishijokun's first time and all, but you're already super duper good at it. Aww. Your beep beep beeps match up really nice with Kozapis. Beep beep beeps? Are you trying to say we're on the same wavelength? Yeah! Wavelengths! Wavelengths! <laughs> well... I guess it's probably because I do something similar with Sataton pretty often. Ah, but, but, back then, Nishijokun was super scary. Oopie. Back then? This morning, in the classroom. Oh, frick. That, that reminds me. I think I had a really stupid delusion this morning. That's why Kozapi went, Fia! And then Kozapi just ended up talking to you all of a sudden. Though to be on a nest, Kozapi. <laughs> to be on a nest? Oh, yeah, it just, it just hit me. <laughs> oh my goodness, I really like the way she talks. It's very funny. <laughs> Though to be on a nest, Kozapi decided that Kozapi should let as little people as possible know about Kozapi's power. Wait, you don't understand. Back then, I was just really desperate. And, uh, um, w well, uh, at the end of the day, it, it was just a delusion. <laughs> Who oh, am I kidding? You probably hate me. <sighs> Kozapi's sure that if Nishijokun really did do that, Kozapi would have killed him right then and there. <laughs> Wait, what? Killed who? Killed us? Wait, what do you mean? Wait, what? Uh huh. She'd said such a disturbing thing so innocently. The contrast between the two extremes sent a chill down my spine. <laughs> what? Don't break Wait, kill us or kill the person that was picking on us? That's, that's, that's important. That's an important distinction. If we would have freaked out and actually started killing people, is she saying that she would have offed us to like maintain everything, like the, the, the world the way it is? Is this, like, a different version from what, like, uh, Ayase and Senna kind of feel? So Ayase is all, like, spiritual, like I, like we've established, right? Very poetic, very, like, you know, the greater will and God's will and all this type of stuff, right? And then Senna's, like, we're in the Matrix. That's basically her whole forte is Matrix talking and, like, you know, look for errors and get rid of errors and, you know, that type of a thing. Don't create errors to draw attention to yourself, you know, so that the... The, 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 uh, I forgot what the guys in the Matrix are called, but, you know, the guys in the, the, the suits or whatever don't come after you and try to, like, you know, stop you from realizing that you're in a simulation, right? Um, but, but is, is Kozapi different because she's saying she wants everything in the Matrix to be the same? So she's almost saying that, like, anyone that gets out of line in this world needs to be suppressed, whereas... Senna saying you need to like uh like what would the opposite of that be like in other words because she's still saying like you know you don't want to create errors because it'll draw attention to you so is she say is because Senna was warning us about the 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 um what was it cosmic church of the divine light and I'm assuming that maybe she's saying that if you create errors, the Church of the, the Divine Light will come after you. So would that mean then if if she was trying to protect us, but 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 Kozue is trying, she would have stopped us, if I'm right in thinking this, 
would she have been like part of the Church of the Divine Light? I mean, we're pretty sure that Ayase is, or at least she speaks on those same terms. So I don't know, man. I don't freaking. I don't know. I don't know. Remaining silent while still communicating in our heads, the two of us passed through Center Guy and came out on Enokashiradori. From an outsider's perspective, do the two of us look like a brand new couple? Walking in silence without even looking at each other. Dude, that she can hear you now though, dude. <sighs> Kozapi let out a crazy loud gasp next to me. Her eyes went wide, and she looked up at me. A... a couple? N no I, it, it was just a random thought. A random thought. <laughs> Phew. Kozapi was about to go Fuyaha all over again, Zeez. I thought Nishijokun had made a lovey-dovey confession to Kozapi. <laughs> S sorry I knew it. It really does suck trying to think when someone's listening to every thought you have. Whenever I was talking to Kozapi, it would probably be better for my overall health if I avoided any unnecessary delusions as much as possible. So, so... Kozapi wants to ask Nishijokun something. It's about last week. When Nishijokun was on TV. <laughs> Even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. That's just an assumption! <laughs> <laughs> Kozapi was down below back when it happened. Down below? At Scramble Crossing, in front of Hachiko's ticket gates. Kozapi was just happening to pass by. Back then, Kozapi could hear it the whole time. Kozapi could hear Nishijokun's voice. Stuff like, I want to save Nanami-shan, and I've got to save her. Kozapi heard it all. That far away? Dang! How? Can you, like, lock on to somebody and, like, create a link so that you're not hearing like literally everyone else around you because otherwise it seems like you just get a headache all the time did my inner voice really reach that far it's a surprisingly long way from the rooftop of o front to the ticket gate at the station yeah and that alone says how strong nishijo kun's feelings were back then huh I guess Kozapi really did understand. I didn't cause such an uproar because I was planning to show off my ESP. Mm-hmm. That's why... That's why Nishijokun doesn't not have worth. Huh? Doesn't not not? <laughs> <laughs> but... In the end... It was all pointless. I... put my own life before Nanami's. And at the very last second, I escaped. Kozapi stopped before the entrance to Roft. And then, while pointing at the entrance, she looked at me. This must have been where she wanted to take me. I didn't think there would be a place to rest inside Roft. It was a small, cramped spot that was filled to the brim with customers. My legs were unconsciously shaking. The cheers and shouts I'd heard that night at Scramble Crossing resounded inside my head. I, I don't want to go to places with lots of people. Once I go inside there, there will be nowhere to run. It'll all be okay, Seas Nishijokun. <laughs> In spite of how afraid I was, Kozapi marched on ahead, ignoring me. I had no choice but to follow her as fast as my legs could take me, trying my best not to look at my surroundings. 
As we got on the escalator, Kozapi looked back at me, standing behind her. She was standing one step higher than me, putting us at about equal height. Nanami-shan was saved, wasn't she? Well, that was all thanks to Nishijokun giving it everything Nishijokun had. My power isn't what saved her. I might as well have done nothing at all. Nishijokun was reaching out real far on the rooftop, right? What were you reaching for? Were you trying to jump and fly away with a new? No. I was trying to get the sword. It was a delusional sword, and it blended right in with the scenery I saw from the rooftop. A D sword? Mm hmm. A D sword. I was told that I could reach out and grab it, but I couldn't. <laughs> How do you. I shouted that aloud without thinking. A couple passing by on the escalator gave me an irritated look, and I frantically slapped my hand over my mouth. Kozapi! How do you know what a D sword is? Cause Kozapi has one too. What? <laughs> as soon as we got off the escalator on the fifth floor, Kozue casually raised her right hand above her head. It was like she was trying to shade herself from the radiant glare of the sun using her hand. As if it were running along her hand, light suddenly appeared in the air. No, it wasn't light. It was closer to lines. If I were to describe it, it'd be similar to wireframe. Countless rays of light intersected in the seemingly empty space before eventually forming a shape akin to that of a snowboard. And then, several streaks of blue light, more fiercely brilliant than any of the wireframe lines, ran across the entirety of it. Kozapi then clasped her open hand. Whoa, dude, look at that. It's like a buster sword, dude. That's like something out of freaking Monster Hunter, yo. What the heck? Immediately following this, what had originally been wireframe, appearing as though a texture had been applied to it, transformed into a massive, solid, seemingly cold to the touch metal plank. A uh, D sword. Yo. Gosh dang it, I want to do the green one. Really bad, but I know it won't be good, so I can't. I just, I don't trust him. And so I, ah, frick. I want to hit the green one, because this would be a good thing, right? But also, dang it, I, no, no. But wait, maybe, okay, wait, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. What if he won't think something screwed up because now that she can hear his thoughts, he won't let his mind go crazy, right? But this is Takami we're talking about, right? I don't think he can help himself. But like, maybe, maybe I could do it. Do I do, I do it again? <laughs> do I click the button for a fourth time to mess myself over? I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to. Because I want him to wake up. Okay, that's my, that's my reason is I want him to wake up. I want him to be able to find the D-sword. But, oh, man... I don't know. I don't want it to be bad. I don't want it to be weird. And it might be weird. I don't want it to be. Gosh. This is only different because 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 he now has accountability, right? He can't think of a bad delusion because she'll see it and then she'll be like, I can't believe you thought that. Right? Like, right? Like, that. that's the logic. I could do it. I could press it maybe just to see Science has messed me over three times in a row, though. Do I trust science again? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to read a little bit first. And then if it if it just stays neutral, it's fine. It's not a red button for sure, but it might be a green button. The shape was far too different than the ones Senna and Ayase possessed. And yet, even so, the aura about its body was the exact same. It was too sinister to be called a board. It was too unaffected to be called a sword. It possessed a pure, unadulterated savagery, one which intermingled with its destructive nobility. She held it in the air with incredible ease. Dude, I just don't trust the green button. I don't. I don't trust it. I want to press it. I don't trust it. I just don't trust it, so I'm not going to. Not going to. I had a feeling that was the end. That's why I just knew. We're just going to leave it right here. It was way too big to be swung around like that indoors. There were other customers around. If anyone were to get hurt, it'd be a total disaster. Kozapi's behavior was making me really nervous. I wasn't sure if it was because she knew I was afraid, but Kozapi recklessly lowered her sword and spun it around on the spot. She looked like she was having fun. This is Kozapi's sword. It helps Kozapi beat up and down the baddies. Beat up and down the baddies? Ah, that could have been bad. You see, can you read the subtext of that? I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think I still chose right. Green button's too scary, man. I just can't press the green button. I can't. Those words made me feel uneasy. Something bothered me about them. Uh, and what I remembered was the smell. The smell of blood. I remembered the scene of the DQNs lying down in a pool of blood. People who do horrible things like that deserve to die! <laughs> Jeez! Okay, I mean... Strong sense of justice, I guess. So she was she was saying she would have had to have killed us if we would have tried hurting people, apparently. But didn't she say that she thought they should all just die? Unless she was talking about, in that moment, she was saying because they were bullying us that the bullies should die, right? But if we would have killed them, she was saying that we would have... She would have came after us, is that... Did I understand that right? Hmm. So, so they... Really were dead? Nope! Even though those worthless cocky roaches had no reason to live, they're still alive. Cocky roaches? Cockroaches! <laughs> <sighs> Kosopi really did want to kill them. <laughs> Kinch, dude! Dude, what is this? I could feel pretty clearly where. Kozapi's mind was when she'd said that. There was not a trace of malice within her. She just wanted to take revenge on the bad people who had wronged her. And I didn't think there was anything inherently wrong with that. Well, I mean, as they say, uh, when, when, you, when one seeks revenge, dig two graves, right? So, it's, uh, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, you know? So there's that. <laughs> but, you know... Lately, Shibuya has been getting a lot more dangerous. Like yesterday, some cocky roaches tried to get me, so Kozapi crash bang beat them up. <laughs> this girl honestly seems pretty twisted, albeit in a different way than me. <laughs> Nishijo kun, over here! Kozapi began to walk, her giant D-sword still in hand. She was pretty short, and her arms were really thin. She didn't look like she could even lift a feather. And yet, despite all of these things, she didn't show any signs of her sword weighing her down. In fact, her steps were light and springy. 
I covered my eyes again and again each time the tip of the sword nearly collided with passing customers or products on display. Miraculously, though, it didn't end up hitting anything. <laughs> we then arrived at a staircase. It was dimly lit, and unlike the rest of the floor, there was no sign of anyone around. No one even approached the area. I didn't expect to find such a desolate spot inside Roft. A ridiculously popular store, especially since it was only a five-minute walk from Shibuya Station. It's not just Roft, actually. The stairs at a lot of stores barely ever have any people near them, ever. You only moved here a few weeks ago, and I've been living here for almost two years. How exactly do you know about this? But I didn't. Kozuki's been walking around Shibuya every day since Kozuki came to Tokyo. That's how Kozuki found it. It's a real relaxing rest place. Kozuki, seemingly in a good mood, sat down on the steps. She then casually laid her D-sword down on the floor. I had a pain in my side that was becoming unbearable, so I decided to take a break as well for the time being. So, so, Nishijokun, whenever you look at the scenery or some other kind of pattern, do you ever see other stuff? Stuff like elephants, wabbits, little lions? Kozuki thinks the thing that made her go the most whoa was when she saw a big salamander. What in the world are you talking about? Kozuki's talking about D swords. <laughs> <laughs> like when you look at a pattern or some scenery, it can look like there's a bunch of different shapes. Like, maybe little animals and stuff. Oh, you mean that. Yeah, I've experienced that before. When I was looking from the perspective of the O-front rooftop, I saw something. I saw a D-sword blending into the scenery. Yup! Ding dong! <laughs> The first time Kozupi saw Kozupi's sword was back when Ham Pom Pom died. Ham Pom Pom? A small hamster Kozupi took care of back in middle school. So, how it went is Kozupi went down to the river to make a grave for Ham Pom Pom. But when Kozupi got there, she realized Kozupi forgot her shovel so she couldn't make a grave for Ham Pom Pom. So Kozupi started crying, wah, really hard. And then Kozupi saw the shape of this sword in the sky. After that, Kozupi started seeing it in all kinds of places. How did you actually get your hands on it? In the end, I found my sword, but I couldn't take it. No matter how hard I tried to reach for it, I couldn't grab hold of it. Well, Kozupi just wished for it. You wished for it? Like, what, that you could have it? But if that's what you did, then I did the same thi- Stopping my thoughts in its tracks, Kozupi looked up at me and shook her head faintly. No! What Kozupi wished for was... Kozupi wants to kill. <laughs> what? What the frick? Uh-huh. Her inner voice echoed clearly in my head. I hadn't misheard her. She'd said it very clearly. Kozupi wished to kill. And she'd been beaming as she said it. The stairs leading up from the fifth floor to the sixth were very quiet. 
with only the faintest background music leaking in from the restaurant. Neither one of us said a word. The sound of someone breathing entered my ears. Was it hers? No. It was my own. A staircase where no one would ever approach. A blind spot in the heart of Shibuya. A pocket of air. He's gonna think that she's the killer, isn't he? I swallowed back my saliva in an attempt to wet my increasingly dry throat. When Kozapi wished that, Kozapi looked up at the sky, and the sword was there again. But, but, until right then, Kozapi didn't think it was a sword. Kozapi just thought of it like something that went sheen. And then, boom! Kozapi thought, can Kozapi kill with that? And then she reached out for it without even doing any thinking. And then... Kozapi grabbed it. And... Then what happened? What did you do after that? Uh, Kozapi tried to kill with it. But Kozapi couldn't. It took Kozapi trying with everything she had just to half kill them. This girl. It's like she's... broken. Hmm. Kozapi's not broken. Does Kozapi look broken? Kozapi's rock solid, and she's got a sword right here. The way she gazed lovingly at the sword resting beside her. I could tell that she had absolute faith in it. Something her heart told me as well. Would I have to become this broken in order to get my hands on a D-sword? Was I still not broken to begin with? <laughs>